Hey, uh, hey, David. Yeah, Phil, what's up? Uh, happy 100. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's a little surprise here. There's a, it's a new show open, so I just wanted to kind of like let it marinate in there for a second. So Take it all in. He, here's the new open. And the goal is to bring you your next favorite band. Intro is my new favorite band. That's, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on. Yeah. I, I heard a, a rumor that you might be able to play that song live today. You heard correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Good enough for rock. I don't know when I rock out here on your next favorite band and show. And listen, it's going to be everybody's favorite band. Like, Phil, you weren't supposed to make me get all... <laughs> God almighty, But this Phil. is why we do it. Like, seriously. I gotta gather myself. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Was... Welcome to your next favorite band. That's both the show title and our promise to you. We here at Stereophilia Studio are tireless in our pursuit of finding incredible, genre-defiant artists who are either a hot, up-and-coming band or a group that has been delivering for years but have flown under the radar. Tonight, we have episode 100 with special guests George Wacker of Lehigh Valley with Love, Blair Crimmins and the Hookers, and Carver Commodore. Woohoo! Each month, we will bring you live streams, audio podcasts, and perhaps even a live concert where you can listen to the stories and hear the music of artists personally curated by us based on what we feel will be worthy of your time. Be sure to subscribe and tune in to each episode because the possibilities are endless and you never know who will be your next favorite band. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Philip Reese. Hello, and I'm your co-host, David Moore. And you are listening to... Your next favorite band. Your 100th favorite band. We're the 100th favorite band? I mean, that's a pretty good place to be on a list. Well, you might be. You play an instrument. I don't even play anything. I well, Number 100, you don't have to necessarily play a 100 an instrument. You could be like, you know, in charge of like, I don't know, thoughts and process or something like that. <laughs> well, what, uh, episode two, we had Bright Dog Red. What was it? Uh, Master of Concepts? What, yeah, what see, that? perfect. Let's let's give ourselves new titles. That I sounds thought that like title it. was pretty badass. I, I'll, I'll borrow that one. If you're Jordan in Bright Dog Island. Red, you can have titles like that. <laughs> They make more sense in that band. Yeah, if you just have a podcast, it's 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 Phil and it's Dave and it's time for the show. Uh, by the way, you can go find Bright Dog Red as episode, I believe it was what, four? Two, it was episode two. Was it two? See, yeah. look, we're already reminiscing. <laughs> um, but they, and, and funny enough, uh, about to release new music. So um, they're uh, actually putting out twin albums. Like they think they're calling them sister albums or sibling albums i think they're calling them uh i don't i don't know the full story behind it yet but it should be pretty cool so we're gonna go through every episode now and talk about all the right. things that have happened with every band since <laughs> okay in episode um, three we yes. know um but uh but yeah 100 episodes i heard that uh that um basically when any show hits 100 episodes um it can now be a a, a candidate for syndication so we're right. now eligible for that yeah, I mean, I, I believe our contracts have that in that we get syndication rights <laughs> stuff now. So hopefully we can get like the slightly edited versions that will be put on at like 730 at night on the local regional broadcast yeah. Yeah, network. Yeah. I really want Sunday at like 1130 p.m. Like I like that. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that used to be where like they would run like a heavily edited movie. Somehow yeah. they get Titanic into two hours with yeah, yeah, commercials. Yeah. It would follow Star Trek The Next Generation and precede like ancient reruns of like Johnny Carson and... uh that I'm happy was... with whatever works. <laughs> anyway, um, but so I actually have something here where these were the the top ten best one hundredth episodes of all time. Um, any oh. guesses as to what might be on this list? So, well, it looks like Friends. Friends was number ten, which uh, was basically this might be one that people remember where Phoebe had triplets and had to give them up. Uh, for I gotta adoption. think of at shows with a hundred episodes. See in. Arrow would never have been on my list because I don't no, know. No, didn't even know Arrow was on for eight years, but apparently that was number nine. And so I'm going to guess, okay, Grey's Anatomy, again, I didn't know it was on that long. It's still on. 
It's like a nighttime soap opera. <laughs> right. And the people who watched this show, because it was rather popular, this was the one where uh, Catherine Heigl's character starts to realize she has a tumor in her brain. Um, there was a really funny mention here, too, was uh, um, that basically it was like a, a show that has uh, like just crazy and crazier and crazier things. Here's Gilmore Girls, another very popular show. Wedding Bell Blues was their 100th episode. Came in 7th. Uh, How I Met Your Mother, Girl vs. Suits, number 6. On there are a list. lot more. Re- I, I would have had The Simpsons on my list. Uh, yeah, so this hundredth episode of The Simpsons was was from nineteen eighty nine. Just to reference how long that show has been on. Yeah, it's still on now. South Park hundredth uh, episode was I'm a little bit country. That came in at number four. Scrubs hundredth episode My Way Home number three. Um, Thirty Rock. Uh, their hundredth episode was uh, titled One Hundred. Well, yeah, it was aware of what it was. <laughs> Yes, it, it understood the assignment. And then the number one 100th episode ever, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So here's the thing about it that I'm most intrigued by. How many of the shows are all newer than I would have expected, minus The Simpsons? Right, yeah. I would have made them earlier in um, eras. Like I would have picked something yeah. like MASH. MASH is yeah. 100 episodes, something like I'm that. Sure. Yeah. Hill yeah. Street Blues, number 100, you know, yep. something like that. Yeah, Sanford and Son. Yeah, exactly. Just so we can all hum the theme song. Correct. Let's see if yeah. we can get and kicked off YouTube quick. Let's see if we can get it in key. <laughs> it's definitely going to happen at some point. Um, and uh, and we've got a lot of great people. So we're loving this, the fact that we've got uh, a lot of people here. We've got some party time going on. Uh, so if you're tuning in, uh, definitely jump in that chat there. Let us know you're out there. One thing we would definitely love to know is if we have introduced you to any uh, next fave band um then uh, let us know that or if you have a candidate for who we should make our next fave band um definitely let us know who we should be bringing on the show in, for episodes 101 and forward um but yeah, we have uh, nothing scheduled phil what phil has just revealed there is we have nothing scheduled we have nothing for next week i'm kidding <laughs> we're actually good through may but uh, we always love hearing from people uh where's the recognition for glee uh, Miller, I don't know. That should probably should be on there. Uh, let's look up what episode 100 was for that show. And Maybe that's the problem. Is that episode? Roy and the Secret for... People is tuned in tonight. Mash. Yeah, see, saying that they agree with you. The uh, the epic show. Maybe um, just episode 100 of those were just like not good. You know, <laughs> that's, like that's part that's, of the problem. That is one uh, one of the elements of of this is that that 100th episode not only has to get to 100 but also has to be a darn good episode. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, one other cool thing happened today, um, and it kind of was unrelated to, uh, us having a hundredth episode, but there's a platform out there for podcasting called Good Pods. So, uh, as you know, there's, you know, like, uh, Spotify and there's Apple Podcasts and there's, you know, all the different ones, Stitcher, Once Upon a Time, RIP. Uh, Good Pods is one of these, and they actually had us, if you look here, um, on their Good Pods Recommends page today. So, somehow, <laughs> we got picked for this. Uh, and it's uh, obviously showing our most recent episode, which there's a uh, Alex uh, Radis uh, episode, uh, the Hot for Robot one, um, is is right there for people uh, to uh, have recommended to them, which I just thought was super cool. So uh, if you're interested in a new podcast platform, the Good Pods one is very interesting, and uh, they're showing us some love today. So that was I thought that was kind of neat. And here's Alex; he's tuned in tonight. He says, "Happy 100th." How about that? Thank you so much, Alex. And I hope that. Uh, uh, you know that um, that uh, helps some of the downloads for the episode and, and some of the other ones and then we will see you Saturday night um, for those of you who are anywhere near Bethlehem there's a wonderful show going on this Saturday at uh, the Ice House that's um, March 23rd in case you're listening to this in some other yeah, in time. some other decade but uh, yeah so Saturday night at the Ice House is a triple bill uh, Galen Deary uh, Roy and the Secret People uh, as well as Alex Radis's band uh, Hot for Robots. So it's a great triple bill and uh, something that people should want to check out and we will be there. So if you see us, say hello. Um, back to that Good Pods thing, any of the podcasting platforms or YouTube, what we would just love to he- see or hear happen is if you like what you kind of have uh, you know experienced over the last hundred episodes, um, if you are so inclined, uh, give us a subscribe, give us a like, give us a follow. Those types of things are hugely helpful for us. Um, then we can bring you your next fave band in, in, in future uh, weeks and months. Um, and then a review on Apple Podcasts. That one happened to have the the one where you can type something in. Helps algorithms. Uh, are great. Yeah, that one that one pays dividends. Yeah, so if you could do that, that'd be amazing. Um, and, uh, and if uh, you just simply want to tune in each week, that's fine too. But uh, that's something that if you want to give back to us, that would be... Great. We do have a very cool announcement. Um, so in uh, April, we are hosting our second annual 
uh, since we are <laughs> 100 episodes, roughly two years, so we are going to have a second annual here, uh, No Planet B Jamboree. Um, we host this in the courtyard of the Sun Inn. Last year, we had perfect weather, right? Yeah, it was really smiled upon us, considering <laughs> earlier in the day when we were setting up, it was questions the whole time. True, yeah, but I guess I always hope that, like, you know, if we're trying to point at taking good care of the Earth, maybe the Earth could take good care of our event. So It we'll delivered keep, for the event. We'll keep putting that out in the universe. Uh, the good news is we have a backup location, the Ice House, uh, which is just down the road. So should the weather threaten to make that a wash, then we can always go down there and still host the day. But tonight we are able to announce the full lineup. Here it is. Um, we are basically going to have for you uh, a free event, the No Planet B Jamboree, and it includes Mustafa Numbisi, uh, who we just mentioned, Galen Deary of Mystic Fool, and Clover. Um, basically each one of these uh, people, uh, Clover had an episode, Galen came on during uh, Music Fest, and Mustafa is scheduled uh, for two weeks prior, so basically early April, we'll have an interview with him to help kind of promote things. But again, if you're anywhere near Bethlehem, that's going to be a very cool day. Um, yeah. We're also going to be sharing information and you know, uh, you know, ways to maybe be more green, more sustainable, more renewable. Um, in fact, if you saw there, one of the sponsors of the day is the Energy Co-op. Uh, that's a, a a basically a co-op owned. Um, uh, energy provider, so you'd be able to allow them to provide you your your, your energy supply, and it's all re fully renewable uh, sources where the energy is generated. So that's kind of what that day is about. There's going to be some other tables around that helps to kind of like uh, make people aware of different options that are available, either locally or globally or whatever. And so that's going to be a cool day. So um, yeah, it should and be then chock a block with music too. Like that's I mean, what I mean. Is at the end of the day, it's also just a great day full of music. Yeah, the Sun Inn has been awesome. So not only do we get to use the courtyard, but they're going to have the bar set up outside. They're going to be open inside, so you can order food, you can get drinks, you can use the restrooms. It's all going to be such a, a very, very cool experience. So hope everyone can come out for that one. It's going to and, be a great time. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's Sunday, April 21st. It starts at 2, um, and uh, it should be really wonderful. So that's, yeah, And this is that's an in-person event, right? This is... It, uh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no live streaming for this yeah, one. There's this no live stream for this one, so be there or be square. The week prior, we are going to do the New Planet B pre-jam. So mm -hmm. on the 16th yep. of April, what we're going to do is kind of bring on some of those uh, organizations that we've interviewed uh, that are trying to make maybe the music industry more green or people who are just kind of very passionate about these topics that are in the music industry. So we'll be able to kind of chat about some of that stuff that week prior, share some of those cool songs and music. There's some really amazing stuff out there um, that uh, we'll be able to share better through the live stream version. And then when we're in person, let's just let the live musicians, you know, be own live. the day yeah, yeah. And, 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 and be live. Exactly. Um, but uh, like we were saying, if you are uh, tuned in uh, live, um, we would love to hear from you in the chat. So if you have anything you want to share with us, especially if there was any band that we introduced to you over these hundred episodes, we'd love to hear that. Or if you have somebody that you think should be our next favorite band, we'd love to hear that as well. But let's bring on, um, what would we say? Is this the... The foster parent, the the, the, the I don't zero, want to say the, the, the zero guest, <laughs> the, like before the first one, right? Patient like the, zero, patient. Well, no, yeah, he wasn't. I guess he was the host. He was somewhat even like patient the, zero is a pretty funny description <laughs> of that. Actually, the, the person who awesome allowed food. this to germinate. Let's at least say that. Um, here is uh, who I can't thank enough: George Wacker of Lehigh Valley with Love. George, welcome to the show. Hey, I was I was the tugboat. <laughs> the <laughs> the I think I should that's have asked more you beforehand how you wanted to be referred to. Well, because the whole thing came up like we were doing during COVID a bunch of live streams, and then Phil had come on. We had uh, we included Phil. We had interviewed him, and that went so well <laughs> that you know we had just talked. And I'm like, hey, if I was going to do a music podcast, this is what I might do, etc. Um, and then we did a couple, and then it just made sense for you to run with it. Uh, so yeah, and here you are, a hundred episodes later. Wow, hundred episodes! I never Yay. would have thought. It. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said it to me the one day where you're like, "You can do this on your own," and I never yeah. thought of it. I was just like, "I don't." Is that what really? And then, kind of just started to explore some of the basic blocking and tackling of like what software you need, you know, how to do this and that. And I was sure. like, "Yeah, I guess it is." out there to be done and some of the stuff i had already bought like cameras and microphones and stuff uh to yeah. do with, you know for, for for when we were on lehigh valley with love music um 
and uh, and yeah, like it was just it was very cool. So yeah, the opportunity to do it to learn from you and then your belief that it was something that I could do was like so you know formative. So like I can't thank you enough for that opportunity to be able to absolutely. Have that I, hey, there's a clearly there's a need for it, and I think it's something that just makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of bands that. I never, no offense to these bands, but I didn't hear of them before maybe you <laughs> right. brought them on. So, I mean, that's the beauty of it. So that's, you should exist. And it's clear <laughs> uh, through a hundred episodes of people are responding well to it and with all the events and everything too. Sure. Um, it's fun how this kind of stuff generated in an attic or a basement right. uh, during COVID. And now it's, it's going back out into the world, yes. you know, in, in the form of, you guys live streaming somewhere or doing mm -hmm. an event and all that. And I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. Last week's episode with Alex Radis, we actually recorded at Lost Tavern Brewing. So right. like, sometimes we're doing it out in the world. Um, that's funny. But, it, but the necessity of creating it being virtual is also what empowers it to not necessarily be limited to, you know, a certain schedule or even sure. the location. So we're able to bring on... So the beauty of Music Fest, which fills probably 80% of our pipeline for the year is those people are not f necessarily local. So like we're able to bring on, for example, the two people on tonight who also are part of our like show music. Blair Crimmins is from Atlanta, Carver Commodore is from Alabama. So like our ability to have a very, you know, seamless evening, fingers crossed, um, with people in such different locations is, is pretty amazing. Well, I, we're, we're fortunate to live in an area where it's crazy. Cause like, I guess it's very different. We always, talk about the crock rock era and how fun that was for the people who lived with it yep. through it. And there's been like a Darth in between then till now where it feels like there's a bit uh, more energy than there has been with national acts coming through and local sure. acts doing really well and having a lot of opportunities to play at like events like you're putting on and live in the garden and tunes at twilight and no in bethlehem and then all the like there's a million other of these events now going on throughout yeah. the lehigh valley in respect of downtown so yeah yeah we definitely yeah. have a good music scene but before we'll come back to that in a second why don't we give people the opportunity to learn a little bit more about lehigh valley with love in case they don't know about it so you basically have a, a multimedia platform whether it's podcasting, social media, and, and such, where you're really shining a light on all the very cool things that we have here in our community. Yeah, we got lucky. We got lucky that we live in an area that there's so much going on, and it's it's constantly growing and evolving, and we're doing fun stuff. Like we just, We're launching the Lehigh Valley Easter keg hunt. That's starting <laughs> March 22nd through March 30th. Those are 30th. some big baskets. We're doing, yeah, <laughs> we're doing that with, uh, in conjunction with Hang Dog Brewing, and uh, basically, you go to these locations, you take a picture, upload it, that whole thing. But it's right. just, again, like trying to do fun things in the area. And we're lucky to work with some great clients that allow us to do it. And our sponsors as well, which is kind of crazy that we have sponsors for a Lehigh Valley podcast. Yeah. But again, it just shows you how vital the area is. That Absolutely. And oh, growing yeah. and vibrant. And yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of great stats around that kind of stuff. So um and then the, there's you just even just do fun and it, like i don't know what the right word would be but just like community things like so recently you had a guest on that was the person who does like the hand-drawn maps and yeah. so that's like could be anywhere in, in the united states but they're very focused here in, in the lehigh valley i thought that one was amazing there's the I'm bird like, feeder cam that's going on yeah and, I, i'm like terminally like curious and have adhd so <laughs> I just I find things like that fascinating, but no, uh, this this guy Mike Michael Sutherland go to sutherlandmaps.com, hand draws the area, yep. uh, and it's just fascinating to in the world of AI and all that to talk to somebody who is really fine tuning a craft, and then I got a bird feeder and we put it on Twitter and we had um, ten thousand views. Of, yeah, we didn't get one, not one bird. Well, your cat is not helping. That's the, <laughs> the cat well, is not helping. We I don't know any of this normal. stuff. There's like a whole world of bird feeding. Like, sure. I, I have it up too high. You know, like it's. it's oh, you not, were getting feedback. Yeah. Like it's not lit properly. <laughs> um, there's all this stuff that I'm like, ah, oh, God. So I'm, I'm restarting it. But yeah, it, it's. 
hey man there, it, there's a market for it we also just recently did our favorite if you have a chance to look it up go to uh lvwithlove.com is where all our stuff is but we did a video of our favorite lehigh valley warehouses that we just released <laughs> That is kind that of, over really and of course, up. you're famous for the 12 foot skeleton maps and the, the yeah. holiday light maps and so on. It's really great. So then there's it's also, like we talked about, this great music scene here in, in the Lehigh Valley. And yeah. that was, again, how we kind of, we were starting to become acquainted, but it was really the music was where the intersection happened. Sure. But recently you've interviewed, so he's playing, I think he's not yet performed, Tony Danza. The, yeah. The boss is playing yeah. here and you, you interviewed him. Okay. He was hilarious. He'll be at Steel Stacks uh, in April. Um, but no, it, again, it's amazing how technology has evolved and, and the fact that people are willing to take an email invite from me being like, hey, I have a podcast. <laughs> right. Tony Danza, do you want to be on it? And now they're responding with yes. yes. So you collect more of these. Uh, yep. But it's amazing. Like, <laughs> I don't care who you are. Tony Danza is a national treasure. And to talk, for him to give me 20 minutes of his attention of course is amazing and it's it's something that you know they can't ever take away from me but right. it's it's been you know it's it's fun it's a fun ride and we're we're excited to see where else we're going yeah so the other thing that i wanted to bring up because this is uh, you run the panel for it and i think it's really a very cool thing that lehigh valley does again speaking to the music community that's here um there's like a music information share that goes on at the ice house where there's tabling of different types of people who are uh, an expert in some con topic and you can go speak to them if you want their feedback and advice on something. And then there's like an hour long panel. And so here's just a picture of, this was actually the first one that yeah. happened. Um, there was a more recent one that had different guests there as well. So like it's kind of become either a once a year or maybe even it's a twice a year thing um, where it's, it's a very cool thing where it's just all of the music community, everyone from musicians to venues to PR people, legal, uh, you know, podcasting, everything is there. And it allows the community to kind of come together and just share ideas. Yeah, I, I wish I could take credit for any of it, but it's <laughs> it's put on by Ryan Susco, who is uh, involved in the local music scene and uh, decided he wanted to put on something that clearly a lot of people respond well to. True. That's a Sunday, and the Ice House is packed. Yeah, um, you know, and he volunteers to put that on, and it's it's fun to see the Ice House being used in my opinion, properly, you know, yep. it's a city building and there are people using it for, you know, great events like, like that one. So they, they just, I think they must've saw a podcast I did. They're like, that old guy will moderate our panel. So they, you know, <laughs> I don't said, think Absolutely. that was it. I don't like, think that was it. But. Nothing, yes, I, I would come down, but no, it's, it's, uh, I, they had a Grammy award-winning uh, artist and yep. yeah, it, it's amazing that again, well, one of the things um, that they were talking about was how their musicians are leaving cities uh, mm -hmm. such as Philadelphia and New York because the scenes are becoming more vibrant in areas like the Lehigh Valley. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's the truth. So yep. it's interesting to hear that and kind of say, all right, you know, there's there's vibrancy there. And so to see young people being excited and putting on events like that is the best. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, thank you, thank you for doing all that, and and thank sure. you uh, for again back to the beginning of this conversation was for you know for the opportunity and the support to make this kind of germinate and tugboating us along. Did you know <laughs> that you have been a part of all one hundred episodes? In like the the beginning bit, yeah. the, the the closing. Right. So the closing show. Oh, uh, the closing. It, it, I'm going to play it right here. Basically, you say let's say goodbye to everybody, and I kept it in because it just fits so well to be like just a okay, we're done, and it goes into the music of Blair Crimmins and the Hookers, who is our next guest. So it was a great oh. transition moment, but I wanted you to hear, this is what's been a part of the end of every episode we've done as uh, your next favorite band. All right, Phil, let, let's say goodbye to everybody. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We need a DJ to sample it. We need to <laughs> That's right. to it. So there, that has been in the close of everything. And if anybody ever wondered, who is that saying that? It is George Wacker. It's me! Blue High Valley with Love. That's the Easter egg you have to do. That's like, you know, deep dive. And <laughs> That'll family. be one of the trivia questions like when we've officially made it. But uh, but anyway, George, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on tonight and helping us celebrate and uh, and reminiscing about the good old days. And uh, yeah. we're going to now bring on Blair Crimmins of the Hooker. Yeah. All right, guys, congratulations. I'm going to continue to do my taxes and um, watch some NBA. 
But I'll, I'll watch along. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. And I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you again, George. Thanks. Thanks, George. And welcome to the show, Blair Crimmins. Yo. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I'm just hanging out here, picking some guitar. Nice. And you're also picking some banjo up in this, uh, our closing music video. Is it? Yeah, I can't. I couldn't hear that. Is that? Uh, it's all over now, or is that? Yeah, the, it's all over now. That's that's I, my my little subtle joke to being the end of the show. Yeah. I guess not so subtle, but <laughs> we we use an instrumental kind of version of it that we strung together from a live performance that you did uh, at an event we held. But uh, <laughs> you say um, we? You held it. I was in attendance. <laughs> well, there, there you go. We, I we recognize did. that event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but. Uh, People may not, if they don't know your music, they may not know what this is because there's no lyrics until the very, very end where you say it's all over now. Was there a time when you would use this one? No, we've used all over now the whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, what <laughs> what it was was uh, the YouTube, uh, you know, bots out there really sink their teeth into certain versions of certain songs. Yeah. And we were constantly getting flagged for our closing show music because we were using the studio version of it. And then once we moved it to this live version, uh, I guess we're snowing the bots at this point. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I, I, I didn't know what to do about that. I tried, I tried to help. It's, it's strange to not have that uh, kind of control over your music. Like once it gets distributed out there, um, yeah, the bots just do their job. And I, yeah. I guess and I they're they working for they're me. I yeah. Some, <laughs> Every time I so I can dispute them, and anytime I do, it almost always like gets accepted. But it's it's one of these things where I'm like, hey, I had permission to use the music, and oh by the way, the songwriter was a guest that episode. Like it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I can't emphasize it enough how much the approval was there. And then yeah. even s still sometimes it's still like, nope, not good enough. Third party content. And I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. Like. I, <laughs> It's strange like world in the wind it is and to your point <laughs> that would be a whole fun other conversation to have at some point is bring on some different musicians who you know want to speak to that because it's your creation and yet somebody else owns the flagging of it like it's like you know you, it, it's it's a it's a very bizarro uh, setup in the music industry and yeah. one that often doesn't favor the musician Right. I mean, it, we're just kind of encouraged to, to get it out into as many platforms as possible. Um, and then at, at that point, then you really kind of lose control over, um, over, you know, how keeping track of how much is being streamed and, and, sure. and you don't even really know, you know, I mean, you can look through and see where all these like fractions of a cent are coming in from. Um, if you really felt like it is kind, right. of, kind of depressing <laughs> and it, it's very, uh you know menial but uh so but it's just you know you just assume that it's it's out there and then it's gonna grow and catch on somehow right 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 yeah i think the streaming and this is an interesting one that, that we've talked about sometime is if you go back a little bit in the music industry um the the music helped fund the tour because the tour was kind of a losing money proposition <clears throat> and the the record sales is what made the money and it's flipped that now the the music generation and publication kind of breaks even or loses money. And you're really trying to get people to be interested in joining the tour and buying right. a ticket and merch. And that's now what generates the revenue. So I think that's more what it's become is you want to put that music out there on the streaming platform. So somebody gets to hear a Blair Crimmins song and says, I now have to go down to where he's performing because I don't want to miss that type of an experience. Yeah. yeah. And then I am. I mean, that's definitely the way it is now. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's probably fluctuated in, in the past, too, where it's kind of returning to an older system where you have to go out and and perform in a in a location. Um, at least that's the way it is for me. But I'm school. I'm old school. I like to go places and play music on instruments. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there that are playing instruments in their bedroom and making money and uh, earning a living doing that without you know, leaving their apartment. Um, sure. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you're a lot of, you're old school in a lot of ways, not just playing the music, <laughs> but the style of music that you play. Sure. You're playing for, again, for people who maybe don't know, uh, Blair Crimmins and the hookers, uh, based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I believe it's either Dixieland jazz or ragtime jazz is probably the, the labels I've heard most appropriately applied, applied to mm -hmm. it, but it's really just that style of new Orleans, 1920s kind of sound, right? 
Dixie Land, Dixie Land, and in New Orleans, they might call it a traditional New Orleans sound, but it's the the early jazz sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and an extremely accomplished group of musicians. There's uh, typically what six of you, um, and it, almost nothing's plugged in, if anything, like other than mics. Six, yeah, six, seven is our fully loaded um, band with three piece horn section. Uh, that's trumpet, trombone, and then our sax player who doubles on clarinet, which is kind of essential to the um, sure. that yeah. New Orleans Dixie Land horn section Definitely. down. And then we, we'll have um, a, a full time piano player doing oh, nice. some stride style. Um, and when he's not there, then I'll hop on and play some songs on piano. Um, mm -hmm. Then uh, and myself upright bass and drums. Yep. Yep. And we, yep. Yeah. And, and the is. instrumentation when I'm playing, I mean, I, I play the four string tenor banjo, which is the, the style of banjo played with a pick. Um, mm -hmm. none, of <laughs> right. that, none of that uh, finger picking, finger picking bluegrass yeah. stuff that is so prevalent in my home state of Georgia. Right. Uh, and, you know, when I pull out a pick and start playing, people are like, what, you're doing it wrong, boy. Uh, <laughs> but this is like, <laughs> what? This jazz music was was played on a, a four string banjo, not a five string, with a pick right. to really have that that uh, chunk rhythm background that cut sure. through all the uh, yeah. all the the drums and the bass and the horns and everything. Um, and not to get it on, too on a diatribe about it, but then once guitar became amplified, then the that old school banjo sound sort of faded out in yeah. favor of guitar. No, no, we love getting, so even in that, so honestly, we wanted to mention this, you were episode number one, so you were the very first ever interview, it was when it was with George, who was the the, the opening guest, Yeah. Um, but you were, my, as far as my career goes, Blair Crimmins and the Hookers, numero were, were, uno, numero uno yeah. interview of my career, so uh, having you back on now, episode 100, is, is quite a treat for yeah, me. Yeah, man, congratulations, congratulations, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. And then you're up here, so on this kind of wall back here of Music Fest pictures. That's a Music Fest. Oh, I see. This here is is you, and in fact, um, it wouldn't be the first time I saw you, but it was the same stage. I'll never forget the first time I ever saw you was This Way to the Egress, then you, and, and then um, Squirrel Nut Zippers. So it was this yeah. New Orleans style triple header. And Music yeah. Fest doesn't always put together a stage that has the same sound to it, but that day they did. And it all it worked. Like, the single greatest six hours of my you know, music ears history. So oh, um, it was really, really quite cool. And that was the first time I ever heard heard you perform. And it just was, you know, again, that, formative. Yeah, that wasn't our first time at Music Fest, but that was um, that that was kind of the breakthrough show that we had. Oh, cool. There, Very cool. Where we, I think we finally, uh, where we had in the past played in one of the smaller rooms there um, inside and then I think that was the first year where they put us in one of the big tents outside. And it was kind of funny because we didn't get out much those first couple of years when we were playing inside. And you were in the cinemas, right? You were in yeah, the indoor the space. Cinema yeah, the show. And we right, were on... associated with the jazz acts. That's why that we right, get put right. inside like that. Right. And we were and we were sort of on that. We were over on that side of town, too. So that's the only part of Bethlehem we knew for the first two or three years when we were playing Music Fest. And when they finally put us <laughs> over on the other side of town out in the... In, in the uh, in the tent, we said, "Oh my God, there's a whole another world over here." That's yeah, yeah. really. We we realized exactly yeah. how big that festival had been. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, because the south side, well, the, the the side that you were on for the cinemas, there's really only like two other stages there. There's the headliner mm -hmm. stage, yes. and then there's the big yeah. Levitt stage, and then there's the small one and the stuff inside. So I guess yeah. you still have five ish stages over there, but um, right. it's nothing Levitt compared stage, to what goes on stage. on the north mm -hmm. side. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, play yeah. on the Levitt stage a, a couple times, so now we get the. We get the north and the south side usually when we come up, and I'm I'm glad to say I'm really happy to say that we are um, coming back this year this summer. Excellent, that is huge. Yeah, <laughs> it's always good to have hookers in town. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, you had said so uh, a, a year ago when we did the No Planet B Jamboree, which is again like we talked about before, it's a it's an environmentalism Earth Day centric kind of uh, event that we host just complete uh, universe serendipity, you were releasing a brand new record of children's music dedicated to being a steward of the earth. Like it was just like yeah. the timing could not have been better. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to kind of give you a moment to talk about that because I just think it's really cool music that, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, even your other stuff could be 
listened to by children, but this is intentionally for kids. Uh, and yeah. it has a lot of great, you know, themes and messaging there. So I figured if you want to talk about that, and I, I wasn't totally sure what song you were going to play, if it was from that or from something else. Uh, I mean, I heard your request loud and clear. We got the oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah, it um, is. It's an amazing song. It came, it, it came together. I mean, I, 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 I first did a, a children's album just at the, the request of many fans of mine that had grown to be parents um, sure. and, and still still listening to Blair Kerman's The Hookers were, were telling me that you know their kid loves your song Me Me Man or you know any number of tunes right, they, would, right, right. They, they were able to enjoy together and have you thought about doing a, a children's record and I definitely shrugged it off for for many years um, before it was like okay, what am I gonna do now I've got three original albums out and a live record and it's like I want to do something different and and I was maybe a, a little bit of a writer's block and the idea of writing with particularly kids in mind and from their perspective just kind of um, kind of rejuvenated my my creative spirit you know sure and I was able to write an album um, of children's tunes just about whatever I wanted at that point you know uh, crazy songs about Venus fly traps and Frankenstein just wanting a hug when he's coming at you like this uh, <laughs> uh, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, wild ideas and then and then <clears throat> and then I kind of slept on it for a while until it got heard by this um, daycare pre-k after school program here in Atlanta that has a few different locations that <clears throat> has what they call a permaculture curriculum where mm -hmm. they teach the kids, like you say, stewardship of, of the environment and gardening, and they wanted music to fit their curriculum. So I took on the, the task and uh, wrote a, a song for each season and then um, a number of songs pertaining to those things within those seasons sure. too, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, songs about reusing and recycling and working together and uh so they gave, they kind of fed me the the uh the the, the uh topic you know the concept which the was prompt great. yeah yeah and that's uh, good though like again like that's sometimes all the kick in the pants you need is a, is a direction and then you're like oh sure. i can write a song about that it gets uh it gets tedious after a while feeling like you, you know you have to be the sole source of your own inspiration you need somebody <laughs> sure. to like, give yeah. you a story or something yeah yeah yeah. You know, tell me about your breakup you know i'm i'm, I'm married i'm happily married now i'm not going to be great right, right, writing right. any breakup songs um uh, but <laughs> there's uh, only one oh angela like we can't yeah, come up with another yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> can't top that one yeah, yeah. Uh, um but, but uh, so you're gonna play something from that yeah yeah absolutely awesome well i'm gonna give you center stage here and if you want to kind of set up this particular song we'll come off and uh, then we'll, we'll come back on and talk about it and speaking of my wife we will um argue about who came up with the, the idea for this i mean it's about being trapped in the belly of a whale which I, think is a Pinocchio Pinocchio thing but uh, while you're there trapped in the belly of the whale you might need to reuse a few things that's come up so I'm living in the belly of a whale not sure how we got here how long it's been I really can't tell but I got all I need right here so swim up with the jaws and take the throat straight down when you get to the tail well, then you to turn around and right here in the belly of a whale and I don't think I'm gonna leave well, it took a little time, but I made it all mine, and now I'm feeling right here at home. I built the clamshell kitchen, I can cook up all my fishing in a seaweed bed where I can lay my head. I got a big soda stuff full of belly and fluff, so if you ever want to drop on by, it might smell a bit funny in a big whale's tummy, but soon you're going to understand why I'm living in the belly of a whale. I'm not sure how I got here. How long it's been, I really can't tell But I got all I need right here To swim over the jaws and take the throat straight down When you get to the tail, well, then you miss the turn around And I'm right here in the belly of a whale I don't think I want to leave We go up, we go down I put my clam shelf in, I'm sitting on an empty can Floating all over Every little thing that's washing between the big whale lips down to me. I built a little 
home ecosystem of my own and a whale belly under the sea. I'm living in the belly of a whale. Not sure how I got there. How long it's been, I really can't tell. But I got all I need right here. So swim over the jaws and take the throw straight down. When you get to the tail, well, then you best turn around. And I'm right here in the belly of a whale. I don't think I want to leave. Well, people come on, start singing along. With a little imagination, we can stop wasting. Well, the world is what you make it. Make sure that you don't take it all and throw it in a garbage can. Find another thing to do with it, mix and reuse it, so you never find another again. Well, I do all I can, and I'm living in the belly of a whale. That song is just so much fun. If people want to find that, it's going to be under Captain Crimmins and the Storyboat Band. Um, and it is a whole album of children's music that's all kind of about that same theme. And uh, the music is, uh, I, it's in that same level. Like I, This is what I love too. Like when my kids were little, I was always in search of music that didn't kind of pander, thinking they needed something simpler. There's mm. plenty of children's music out there that doesn't simplify itself. It just still produces the same quality music. It just may be about themes that a kid would care about. But right. like, I just love that you didn't do anything to the, the, the excellence of your songwriting. Like it's still just that same quality Dixieland music just set to the tune of, of, uh, of, of children's type content. <laughs> well, thank, yeah. Thank you. I mean, I want to have fun. I want to have fun with it and, uh, and write the kind of songs that I like to perform. I don't want to, be there rolling my eyes when I'm singing it. Yeah, no, God, that's so please, true. Please. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a couple comments here. Someone says uh, you have really good uh, cell service in that wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, someone also uh, uh, commented on they think you have a frog habitat behind you. But if I had to guess, it's the chameleon habitat. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's my pet. My pet chameleon. Uh, he just went to sleep, I think. <laughs> well, the lights are off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he might yeah, come out. There was somebody here who was wondering, is that a frog enclosure? Well, let me uh, see. Let me see. Oh, look at all those beautiful you banjos you just revealed, too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> yes. Uh, as you were saying, Phil, this is in that same group of music that is, like, we both have kids that we're both the same age. Yeah. Our kids roughly overlap age-wise, and that's the same thing where it's like a little bit of survival that you could also listen to the same things as a parent. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> so Here's old Rebel. He was, he's he's tired. He was he was getting ready to close his eyes. Yeah. You could tell because he's really, he goes into a really <laughs> light color right. uh, before he sleeps. He's usually a little darker red. Is but this Rebel as okay. in like yeah. named after like a David Bowie influence? Uh, yes, you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, a poster of Labyrinth over here. Very too. cool. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> so, I, my, my third chameleon the first one was ziggy stardust the, the second one was aladdin sane uh, bowie's next album and yeah now rebel rebel there you go yeah he's just gonna move it, through the and, entire bowie catalog as he has other chameleons. <laughs> that's right yeah. Yeah. good thing there's a lot to pull from there's plenty the next one will be pull, let's pull. dance yeah. um <laughs> then what but, do, uh, but. <laughs> if people want to know, um, so this will be a good segue because I had a, 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 I was wondering if you might tell a story. Do you need to put him back? He's mad. Yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> mad. <laughs> so if people want to know what happened to, I believe it was Chameleon 2, um, you do tell the story on your wife's podcast uh, called Davi the Scapegoat. Uh, and, um, uh, he did not suffer. He did not end well from what I remember on the story of his passing. Well, the first one. The first one died because it. We called it a he, but it uh, ended up it was a she. Okay. Is that what you? Is that the story you're? I just remember to? there was one that. Oh their, no! Their yeah. private well, part got stuck. Aladdin somewhere. had a prolapse cloaca. Yes. It is really unpleasant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 
pissy, <laughs> yeah. your pet with its like guts just hanging out. Right. Um, yeah, that was sad. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah. But on that show, so there's a story. If you're willing to tell parts of this, I, I would be thrilled. If not, we're just going to promote Davi's show, and it's like episode two or three. Oh, but sure. there was this amazing story that you told of you and a buddy of yours when you were younger broke into a house. Oh, my and, God, yeah. Yeah, so would you mind maybe telling at least a, a brief synopsis of this experience? Because <laughs> I think it's amazing. What? Uh, yeah, I don't remember what episode it, it is, I'll, but I will tell you the title. Um of the episode that's um, a spoiler alert after the story yeah, we'll yeah, start yeah there you the go story. a friend uh, so a friend of mine um he he found this house that it was on the verge of being demolished it looked like it already had a wrecking ball go through this go through the roof or something like that and he he walked around the outside of it and, and scrounged around but got kind of a weird feeling um and left and uh trans chameleon right somebody yeah said, exactly. yeah <laughs> ziggy ziggy was a, a male a female that identified as a male uh but so my friend goes and he comes back to me and he says i found this weird house it was super creepy i didn't I, I was hoping you could go with me and go inside and just see what's going on in there so, absolutely so we went and it was it's in Atlanta. It wasn't like out in the middle of nowhere or anything. Right, right, right. Um, so but but as soon as we walked in, the the ceiling was caving in and all, hanging from the side of the of the, what used to be the floor up, up from the, the you know the, the the story above was like a clawfoot bathtub, like just hanging off like this. <laughs> it was kind of caving in the the because it had been rained on. The floor collapsed. And there was all this cool stuff like antique furniture and stuff, but it was all just trash because it's been the sure. elements forever. And we decided to split our separate ways and go walk through the house. And I turned a corner and went into this bedroom and I, I felt something. I kicked something with my foot um, and it kind of rolled down the. Now, how old are <laughs> you at this point? I think that's... Roll, rolled across the floor. I mean, we were 30 something years old. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> we, but. My, this, okay, but friends, my friend Spencer and I, we've been friends since we were like 12. So yeah, we yeah. still act like th this. Uh, when we get together, <laughs> right. everything's always an adventure. Um, and so I, I felt something under my foot that kind of rolled out from under my foot. And I looked down and it was a dildo. Um, is that the oh. word I should use on the yes, podcast? Yes, absolutely. Okay. No, you're good. To, and you then can I say whatever looked, you need to. I just want to. And then I was like. The oh, reveal was very God. important. I like I was like, what did I, is that really, am I seeing a, a dildo? Oh God. And then I looked and I saw another one and then I saw another one and then I saw another one. And there was a secret dildo a, stash. A little, yes. like, like a pile of dildos, like, like, like almost like somebody was about to, as I said in the podcast, like they were making a campfire out of them You're or right. something <laughs> like that, stacking them. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then I go, I go, Spencer. Uh, there's some dildos in here, and he goes, "Yep, they're in here too." There's a whole other <laughs> in the room on the other side of the house. So, and, in all told, it, was, it had to be the what a couple hundred. Yeah, I mean, there it it seems like a hundred or more dildos in this house, <laughs> um, and you know, porn, you know, like the VHS boxes scattered right. about. Like it, somebody was getting. Down so and pretty dirty much it must have been house. somebody who broke in while it was an abandoned property and turned it into whatever this became. I don't think so. We think we think that it was the guy that that actually owned the house. Oh jeez. <laughs> um, that just sort of went off the went off the deep end, maybe psychologically and sexually, and <laughs> yeah. and, and then and left it and, in complete disarray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dildo ray. Um, yeah. But so there and is a just you like go a, into. A, a, OCD Way more thing where every, every time he saw one, he had to buy it, you know? Like, right, right, right. Yeah, like yeah. Catcher in the Rye or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but uh, that episode where you talk about it, it's it's a, it's a well-paced story, like retelling <laughs> of it. And there's a second story that you sneak I mean, it's just like, a, it's a fun episode. And I, I, I became a subscriber because of that one. And the episode is called... Dildo, dildo house. house. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it will I just, forever be referred to as the dildo house. Of course. <laughs> it's the only um, thing that I makes figured, sense. 
Yeah, right. if we're going to talk, you know, if we're going to have children's music, we we got to you know, balance that out <laughs> and, and tell a story about that property. But um, maybe but, I need to uh, write a song about the dildo house. That would be, yeah, at least something that just kind of vamps and covers over something where, like, if somebody breaks a string, then you can kind of bust that one out. Oh, I mean, as you know, as, as you know, like in the full episode, it's a long form story that goes into some some drama and family history. Uh, yep. You know, maybe that this could be a really it's a whole concept like album a, waiting a to rock happen. opera. Uh, yeah. But uh, but anyway, thank you so much for again. One day I was actually so again uh, on this particular uh, performance that I snapped this picture. um, It was 2021. We were basically George and I kind of like just coming up with this idea that we might bring on some musicians. And I actually because of being a um, an Arts Quest member got the opportunity to introduce one band during Music Fest, and I picked Blair Crimmins and the Hookers because I just wanted to do it because I loved your music. And backstage, you obviously were so nice and so cordial. We took a picture, and I was like, "By the way, would you come on a podcast?" And you're like, "Sure." Yeah. <laughs> and so, Knucklehead with zero episodes, and you said yes. And now here we are, hundred episodes no. later. I don't know that I would have had the confidence to do it if you said uh, no, Didn't which you take, would have been completely the- justified. You took me to the the Red Stag first well, you and gave said, me a couple shots, and then I said, that, and then asked me. That that is true. I was well, saying, you said at the film, end, how do you set, think I? You should see what he had to do to get me to do this for a hundred episodes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that dildo house in a second. It's going to be a at mess. The end of the set, we'll be up at the Red Stag. We love Bethlehem. We're going to be hanging out, and so we obviously at the towards the end of the night headed up to the Red Stag, and I was like, "Hey, you said you want to do shots," and you were like, "What are we waiting for?" So yeah. off we went, and I'm here all and, weekend. Had, <laughs> had a good story. And then, yeah, so what by any means possible. But yes, you were uh, uh, such an inspiration by just simply being cool with the idea of coming on a show um, and uh, and talking about your story. And it's, uh, it's still a great uh, interview. Like there's such a, amazing elements to how you went from, you know, the musician you were to the musician you are today and all that stuff that I recommend people go check that one out. Um, and then there's even one where... All of the hookers came on during Music Fest yeah. 22. There's an episode on the Your Next Favorite Band channel where we get to talk to all six members that were there. Um, and uh, I thought that one was super cool, too. So there's actually two different uh, Yeah, that's editions. August of 22. So if anybody's going to look for it, that's where you'd find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live in the, co- in the coffee shop. What's the name of that coffee shop? Oh, Godfrey Daniels. Godfrey Daniels, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been great. I mean, God, we've known each other for a long time. It's been really great, you know, yeah. friends and getting to know you and coming up and meeting your whole family and everything, you know? Exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah, the, I can't thank you enough and uh, look forward to more, uh, you know, performances. And hopefully uh, I can tap into some of these uh, hijinks adventures and, and we can find an abandoned shack up this way uh, in Bethlehem <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and, I mean, th- there's something in those uh, steel mills, I'm sure. There's certainly something there. But, uh, <laughs> but Blair, thank you again so much. And thanks thank for performing you. today. That was wonderful. Hell yeah. I'll see you up in uh, Bethlehem. Absolutely. See you in August. Please. Absolutely. David. Phil, for the 100th episode, Blair kindly brought us 100 dildos. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And like I'm the 12 days of Christmas. But, I'm you know. Trying to avoid different. this going 100 minutes. But, uh, uh, well, we'll see. We got 47 more to go. Yeah, well, we, we're good so far, but uh, we are going to bring on um, Carver Commodore, and we have tonight Philip Blevins and David Smith Jr. from Carver Commodore. Hello. What's up? Congratulations oh, on 100 episodes. That's Thank awesome. you so much. I just want to emphasize that it's important that we only have two names that we all sorted out between all of us before <laughs> yeah, this yeah, came this. together. On, so yeah, that that David's the on the left and the Phil's right. on the right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's and much better. I also appreciate that the Davids also picked very regular last names. I'm technically also a junior. Like, this is all lining nice. up very well. I love it. <laughs> you know, whenever I tell people my name, people think I'm making it up. Like, I'm Me lying too. about it. I'm like, like David like, Smith, I, really? What's yeah. your brother's name? John Smith? And I'm like, actually, yes, my brother's it's name it's is Jonathan <laughs> Smith. So and that is probably like if you're in Starbucks, they're like, name David. Uh last name Smith Jr. Yep, still got yeah. three of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. But uh but uh thank you so much for coming on tonight. Again, so the, these were the when we were coming up with the hundredth episode, like these were the most formative moments uh, in, in those early, uh, you know, months, weeks, whatever. Obviously, George was the platform. Uh, Blair was that first ever interview, and for you all, it was the first 
your next favorite ma band moment I had. Like I had this, you know, mind blown moment of when you performed at Music Fest that year. Um, and then we did the interview uh, back in, in November following that. But again, like to have this, you know, I'm approaching 50 and I go up to these, you know, 20 somethings who are a rock band from Alabama. And I was like, you want to come on my show that has zero episodes right now? And you guys were like, absolutely. That sounds amazing. We're going to be on tour, but don't worry about it. We're going to get a say. I was just like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, it was these moments where I was just like, this can really happen. And for sure. We, but we also like there was this like appreciation for shining a light on this amazing music that was out there from obviously the musician otherwise you wouldn't have said yes, but also the audience, they were saying they're just struggling to find new music. Like people want to find it. They don't, they, they just don't know where to look anymore. Um, there's no radio, there's no MTV, there's no, the algorithms just keep spitting you back what you already know. So it's like this moment of maybe there's something to be, you know, here where you're just simply going to shine a light on exceptional music genre be damned. Um, and that's what the, what again, like, where all I'm getting at there is not necessarily anything other than just because you all were willing to come on this show as this incredible young up and coming rock group. Um, it was just like, let's go do as much of this as we possibly can. But similar to the Blair story, like we've seen each other a ton and, and uh, you guys are like, you know, are so open to just simply hanging out. Like it's just, it's such a great experience this whole time. So I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, man. It's always a good time. Always a good time. <laughs> But uh, but Philip, so how are you doing? Uh, like uh, the, the the there's tons of new music out there. Um, there there's all sorts of uh, you know just cool opportunities. We're going to bring up some specific things here. But how are things going uh, just in general for the two of you, or for the five of you? But you get to speak on behalf of the other. Yeah, two. mouthpiece tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now's your opportunity. It. It's cold right now. We had a little a snap. Um, so. It's probably a little bit closer to you guys right now. It was like 50 degrees today. It was a good <laughs> spring day down here. Loving it. Get to cut the grass. We're just hanging out. We had a really good hometown show. What was that? Last weekend? Yep. Last uh, um, last Friday. Yeah. <clears throat> we're off for a little bit, and we just finished up another record. Um, so we're in the process of finalizing all of that, getting it mixed, mastered, all that good stuff. So we're at home for a little bit and just kind of mm – -hmm. Um, you know, taking our time with the new music, making sure all that's done properly and um, getting yeah. to spend some time with, with family in the meantime. But we sure. did have a killer run earlier this year, too, in, in February. We went up north, um, played some shows in Florida in January. So we've we've been able to get around a little bit. Um, sure. Yeah. Not a ton of touring this year, but I feel like it's been um, quality over quantity, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. the goal was um, to be able to accomplish that, too. So. Is this new record um, a full length or is it an EP? It's a full length record. Um, nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's exciting. Um, it was the first time that the five of us really dove in. We self-produced this one. Um, oh, nice. And I, I feel like that kind of sonically creates this cool this cool thing where like this record that we've been working on is is the five of us like through and through. Absolutely. You know? Um, and when you spend that much time together, you were touring for almost a good solid, what, two years? Like, yeah, you really yeah. get to know each other's strength. David, for sure. It was like, what, early 2021? It was uh, April. It was April 1st, 2021 yeah. was when my first show in Dahlonega, Georgia. Uh, <laughs> there were, I think, maybe four people there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Including I, told a, I told a joke out of a joke book at one point. Uh, it was a good time. You know? um, but that was also like post, post, post COVID. Like right, it was yeah. that first, you know, that first couple months of trying to get back at it, you know, it was still hard to get people, convince people to come out. But sure. um, yeah, anyway, so the record that we've been working on, um, I, I think it's, I think people are going to really love to kind of see the inside of uh, like what we can bring to the table, just the five of us, you know, yeah. and producers are great. Having a producer in the past for all the projects leading up to this one has been beneficial. Um, but this time around, we kind of just wanted to see what we could accomplish, like with our hive mind, you know? <laughs> so I, we're, I'm very, I think I can speak for Philip and the guys who couldn't hop on today, but we're like really, really proud of this mm -hmm. uh, project. Um, I think it's going to, I think people are going to really love it. Yeah, and there's something special too about just the process of recording at the Sundrop Sound, which is Single Locked Studio. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's a house converted into a recording studio. So it's really laid back and they have a, uh, another home aside it that we can stay in and we can sleep. We can basically just record as much as we like, hang out in the evenings, work on stuff. So it's, it's a very different environment than what we've had before. Uh, we did record the last EP there. Um, and that, I think that sort of catapulted us trying to do more in Alabama, more closer to home. Um, and yeah. more, more friends, you know, that we're just already close with. And, and at the end of the day, like, you know, what David mentioned too, work, working with producers is great and it's awesome to have outsider input, but we're also really OCD and kind of know what we <laughs> want to begin with. Oh, yeah. totally. Incredibly stubborn. Absolutely. And <laughs> we, we end up just reverting back to yeah. what the original was anyway. Was, so yeah. it's like, you know, we're going to try it. I think we've got enough knowledge on how to do this. And we've been working with a fantastic audio engineer, his name's Austin Motlow. He yeah. engineered the last EP. Sure. He's the yeah. one that gets the sounds. We get the ideas, and yeah, of, I mean, it's just been and it becomes a reality. Yeah, so yeah. we're gonna get to that EP in a second because it's it's the most current stuff that's out there, and I want to make sure we shine a light on it. But first, if we just go back to the other uh, releases, so in 2019 there was the album "Tell Me What You Want." There was a couple of singles before that that are amazing that people should check out as well. Um, but uh, it's it's that's the first full length, and then 2021 is "Welcome to the Modern World." Um, which is another full length. And then more recently, um, it's the uh, If Nothing Happens EP, right? Yeah. Too Much came out, which it was an EP. And then If Nothing Happens. That's right. Yep. So yeah, there's more two more EPs more recently. Yeah, yeah we released mm -hmm. them on vinyl together. So it yeah. feels like a complete project. At the end yeah. Of it's a part one and part yeah. two. It's a black and you know, white, if you will. The, yeah, the and A and a B, most, it's a black and white. I think it's how yeah. you when you put two EPs together. Yeah. yeah, initially the concept behind too much and if nothing happens was for it to be kind of a yin and yang scenario where too much was going to be like all of our heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then at the time we just called it the easy listening EP. Um, <laughs> and it was going to be like a front and back kind of thing sure. where it was a yin and yang. But the more we dove into the songs for if nothing happens and they kind of just evolved naturally, we uh, initially that was going to just be like acoustic guitars you know, really light percussion, really natural. And obviously the, if nothing happens that the world got has more, you know, band aspect to it because we just fell in love with the songs in a way that we wanted to, you know, let them evolve past, yeah. you know, kind of the wall that we had put up initially. And they, I think, you know, they evolved really beautifully into like a really great conceptual. EP. Totally. Yeah. And I think even like, um, uh, early albums used to take advantage of that, whether it was vinyl or cassettes. There was a moment where the first half was going to be one type of either theme or sound, and then you'd flip it, and it would be a different experience. CDs totally. blew that up, and then right. streaming has totally obliterated it into Swiss cheese. But it's like, that's cool to think that a musician and artist still would want to go and design yeah. it in that way and mm -hmm. take advantage of it in the way, the only way you can is by releasing it as two separate EPs and then saying, ha-ha, I got you. Um, right you know at the merch table right yep exactly <laughs> there I were I, I don't want to miss out on the uh the the chat here some people were wondering if there could be carver commodore children's music the way that blair crimmins wrote some children's music hey the kids love carver commodore i think it already is a little bit in a weird <laughs> way like you know we yeah. we get videos and and people who like their kids are just like jamming to black plastic you know Right, so right, right. We always say Carver is for the kids. That's uh, right. <laughs> we just did a, a release. <laughs> Here it is. Show. It was Tara. She said, uh, Can I request a Carver Commodore children's album? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've got my. And oldest. then Miller even went a little farther and wanted a Carver Commodore children's Christmas album. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Well, hey. <laughs> Which then we turned can bust into. bust out the old rock and roll wiggles jackets and, they, and give yeah. it a go. <laughs> I have, look at this. I have mine right hey, here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those were sweet. Those from were, gap matching fits um, yeah and died that is but yeah thing. i think kids just love carver in general i feel oh, like for sure. we it, our albums are kind of kids albums a little bit they can be why not mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> and then uh there was also um what was the other request in here wish i had found out about carver <laughs> nice oh here's people were saying we were old as balls that's great from before when we were wow. talking about <laughs> 50, then there's a lot of compliments here for 
for getting the full length out. That's amazing. And then here's uh, some next fave, next fave slay from Tiana. I like it. I yeah. like that. Um, yeah, here we are. Here's a recent comment. Uh, the teeny boppers loved it too. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> we're a fan. We're, we're multi-generational. There you go. There you go. So let's get into this a little bit. So I wanted to bring up, um, cause there's, you went out off of that, more recent EP and just traveled and shot five videos in five days. You captured it all. There's a like a movie that's available. It's like 12 minutes long. It's amazing. So I kind of wanted to bring that up here a little bit while maybe you chatted about it. Um, so let me yeah. do share this and the audio because I want to bring in some of it. Um, so this is your YouTube channel. Yeah. L looking pretty sweet. And then down here is like uh, the, the five videos uh, and then the movie. So I want to bring up the movie off the channel. And let's just, uh, it's <laughs> all shot kind of Utah, Nevada. Yeah, uh, De California desert, um, Nevada. Death uh, Valley. Death Valley, yeah, Utah. I'm about Day to four or five. Bit, if need it's anything, cold. I told it was in fun. Zion. Yeah, it's fun to see. Not a We're going to try to make it look uh, as tropical and beachy as we can, but. <laughs> There's snow on the ground out here. Awesome. It's yeah, it's man. February in Utah. So we're in Utah. Are we not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we in Utah? That's <laughs> that's a very Carver interaction right there. Yes. You got to witness. Yeah. So this was. I question. Five videos in five days. Uh, it was a ton of work. We we were determined. Um, yeah. But, and, and, and I think this the movie here is just so fun because it's basically a behind the scenes thing of the video shooting, but also the camaraderie that the five of you have, and just some of the peeks into even the sacrifices that you all make and stuff, and the ups and downs of this. Like this moment is hilarious because it's. <laughs> Like yeah, not yeah. Music it, what you don't see is the crowd of people because we're just in a public park at that point. Right, right, and right. So there's just people staring at us while we were doing that. Plenty of public <laughs> trespassing. Yes, this is all this is all illegal trespassing right, that you're seeing right here. Right. So this is Sun Sundrop Studios that we yeah. mentioned earlier. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is where we tracked the EP as well as the new record. We started out mm -hmm. the EP. Just like yeah, and it's. It, I'll say this too, and actually, I'm going to stop it there, just because it's. I think we accomplished the point in yeah. that it. Uh, it's beautifully shot. It sounds yeah. great. So like it's, and again, it's 12 minutes long. So it's not like it's going to take up your whole evening, but if you put on some headphones and you go sit down and watch that, it's just such a very cool window into that. How long was that? A couple of weeks. Uh, the the. Like the, the full the, run of like heading out and coming back home. It, it was all five days. Yeah, it was all five days. Yeah, yeah we, I we thought just the shooting out. was five days, and it might yeah. have been like two weeks total. And Holy dude, smokes! This whole thing almost came out as a bonus. So Braden, who shot all of this footage that you see on the documentary, there's a few intercuts from. Um, I believe Daniel's got some cuts right from mm -hmm. music videos. But everything else, um, Braden called on his own. He went out as our basically. I a grip, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A and grip. A grip, yeah. On the right, right, right. Grip. But he was like, hey, I've kind of got this passion project. I'd like to do um, a documentary for you guys. I'm like, sweet. Yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. He caught and all of that with us really knowing um, and <laughs> put it together. He came in and did some talking head videos with us in the studio, uh, which is that footage. And that was months later. That was mm -hmm. maybe like summer or yeah. something like that. <clears throat> and then put it together, did this whole thing, sent it to us like, Dude, this is perfect. We really yeah. didn't have anything to like add or change. He just really understood the concept right. of, you know, telling a band's story and, you know, really giving some personality to it. And I felt like did a great job at, you know, sharing our hearts and where we were at at the time when we put this record together. Yeah. So Braden <clears throat> really knocked it out of the park on that. And <laughs> we really didn't have anything to do with it. He, that was his. Deal. Yeah, he, he was, and that's why it says a film by Tonus sure. Walker, like, you yeah. know, because it really was, we were just kind of the, the, the subjects, you know, and so it was actually really cool to kind of not have our hands on it at all and just be delivered this product that like, so perfectly captures sure. the way that we felt 
being in this band, the way that, you know, the struggles that we're going through, explaining what the EP is about. Um, he just completely, and like, like Philip said, you know, we, we went out with an amazing DP named Daniel Cunningham and then uh, Tonus Braden Walker is his name. He's one of my best friends. He came just to kind of be a grip to help to sure. carry stuff. And um, like, like Phil said, like he just kind of started, he had his own camera with him that he was just kind of getting B-roll uh, <laughs> for the fun of it. And then it yep. turned into this thing where he, he, I think he just experienced that week with us and was like, this is this chemistry, you know, the way these guys interact, their story is so like, yes. I want to share that. So it was yeah. cool to get it back and feel like, Oh man, like he really understood like he did such a great job of showing the way we feel in documentary mm -hmm. format. Sure. Um, and I don't That's think fantastic. we could have done that. We, I don't think we could have done that in house, you know? No, and, no, no. It, 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 David and I talk about this a lot where it becomes a little too precious. There's elements right. you don't want to cut or edit right. because it's important to you. But for somebody who has one step or two steps removed, yep. they're yep. able to like polish that down and sand it down and make it much more crisp and much more uh, entertaining for somebody who, you know, is, absolutely. Is yeah, Absolutely. there's the precious factor along with the fact that they have perspective. That's you know brings actually yeah. back to the, your producer note from before. The idea that you guys use a producer in the past because you wanted an asset of outside ears, but now you guys have been together long enough. You've learned how to do all that stuff, and I think that right. all comes together. It's, it comes from the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so again, if you saw that uh, the the there's the five videos, so each song gets its own video, and then there's this basically documentary of a behind the scenes thing. It culminates. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing little snippets and behind the scenes of each one of those five videos and hearing mm -hmm. from all five members of the band. And then it culminates to the live show that's at Schulz Theater in, in Florence, Alabama, which is kind of like hometown for you're yep. you're in different cities within Alabama. But Florence kind of is the car. It's the hub. Yeah. yeah, it's the hub. So, it's where the band started. Right, right, right. So there's this very cool kind of like, again, the culmination of some of the elements of what these songs are about are we're kind of busting our ass. We're putting out music that we think is amazing. Other people are telling us is amazing, but we're not getting to the heights that we kind of envisioned, mm -hmm. but it's ultimately okay. Like, it's not like a, 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 a hubris thing. It's not like pride. It's more like, well, we thought we'd, everyone told us we'd have been higher than this by now, but it's okay that it isn't. You kind of thing. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. And so, but the coolest part is by finishing with that live show in the hub of the hometown, you get to see why there's this such an electric magic of how much people who are connected to this music, obviously the people who have heard it the longest, yeah. are just so into it. And then hopefully what they what people get out of it is then, you know, you're seeing other people who aren't from Alabama, like myself and people who are in the chat here who, who tuned in, especially for you all, that once you hear this music and you catch on to the Carver Commodore kind of like train, it's like you just keep, you can't wait for the new music. You love listening to the the prior uh, you know uh, versions of things, and it's just like it, it, it's amazing. So I kind of wanted to share some of the music off of this. I, I have the video here for "Too Late to Get Out," and why I picked that one was a it's an amazing song, but also in that documentary they show you again. This one took some real choreography because it's a tiny house. Yes. And maybe if you just watch the video, you won't have full appreciation for how much gymnastics needed to be done by like handing cameras through, you know, in time with the movements uh, through yeah. windows and upstairs and stuff. Yes. So I'm going to have this play a little bit and then I'll bring you guys cool. back on to kind of chat about it a little bit. Here is Too Late to Get Out by Carver Commodore. Better make yourself comfortable. Get used to the sun We made a bed and now, dear We'll sleep in it tonight Wasn't everything wonderful When it all was over
Wayne Power Commodore album set all in one song where it has that very sweet emotional opening and then it still has the rock to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> But anything about this particular, again, the, the tiny house? Show. Yeah, so so Peyton found the tiny house, you know, while we were just looking for places to stay. Um, it, it was kind of one of those areas where it had the tiny house and then there was like a big teepee that you could stay in and a wagon that you could stay in. Um, and so even in one of the other videos, uh, you can see the big teepee behind Peyton. That was at the same place. Um, but we found this tiny house and Daniel, our uh, DP and I, you know, as we were kind of talking through uh, what we wanted to do there, it became evident that it was like, well, you could start on the roof. It kind of just naturally became like a one shot thing. Yeah. Just from so chatting about it. Is it done in one it. shot? Um, well, no. Um, okay. But no, I mean, tried, listen, that would have been a massive yeah, so thing. There, there are yeah. a couple cuts in there that, you know, maybe if you've got a sharp eye, if you watch the video enough times, you can find them. Um, I think there's three, there's only three cuts, maybe two cuts. Right. Um, three. But there's yeah, three. So uh, yeah, there's, there's one. A, there's one right there, but that one's not meant to be sneaky. That's the we, end of the video where the beard sure. disappears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That would have uh, been quite literally impossible. I found one. I'm amazing at this. <laughs> The first one was the whole first half of the song before Peyton steps out of the trailer. It was actually shot the next morning. We had to sort of recreate some lighting to mm -hmm. give it as much of a sunset feel as we possibly could in the trailer. Yep. Uh, and I think yeah, that was so really most of the people of time when we got there the day before. We only had we enough ran out of sunlight. To, yeah. It just got and you dark. can see yeah. this is the last shot, and the sun's already pretty sure, much yeah, gone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the first shot of Peyton on the roof was the first shot that we got there uh, at the tiny house. And then when he goes down the stairs, uh, there's kind of this pass where the camera goes behind his back, and that's one cut. And then when he walks into the house with all of us sitting there, that's actually the next morning at like six in the morning. Oh wow! Um, and then we did the whole interior of the house that morning. And then as he's walking back out of the house and the camera goes through the window, that's another cut right there through the window. And on the outside of the windows the night before again. Um, so there's some, you know, some, I guess, you, movie magic in there. A little yeah, bit, sure. So. But I'm sure, like, if you know you're trying to do this in five days and the sun's going down, you're like, right. Yeah. You have to, yeah, you have I'm to adapt. Down. Yeah. You have yeah. to adapt, which yeah. is why we ended up doing it the next morning. That wasn't yeah. part of the initial plan, but it was like we, we kind of, you play with the cards you're dealt, you know? Yeah. yeah. There all is I a heard plan. The 6 a.m was the follow-up yeah. that i heard when the sun going down where it's like oh you know we're no. in a rock band right like this yep. is <laughs> yeah there's a plan hatching in the chat here where uh tara's gonna film the next one on her 3ds oh and it's gonna right. be either a big basket or the world's largest fork okay or a huge, okay. huge bird cage in casey illinois but anyway yeah you've got your next one already figured out nothing to worry about all right it. cool hey some other tidbits about the tiny house while i'm thinking yeah, yeah. the night that we got there since we ran out of sunlight obviously we couldn't shoot anymore we shot some promo and some photos of the slot machine just mm -hmm. right outside of the the sort of area we were filming that last shot in sure. we put the slot machine in the desert or really just yeah. the sand. it looked like the desert right there so right, right, right. We got some nighttime scenes with it plugged in and then the next morning early morning brayden took the mm -hmm. photo for or was it you took it the was photo brayden for, who took the photo for the for the album cover Okay, yeah. Um, While the sun was rising, it's that's so that the, was that next the, morning, right before we shot in the tiny house. So right. even even like Philip was saying, and even like we've kind of talked about how it was five shoots in five days. They all overlapped with each other to where when the sun went down for this tiny house shoot, we went and put this slot machine out. We even got some shots for the music video for if nothing happens. Mm -hmm. um, all the shots of you know the last shot of the music video where it's Peyton's reflection. Sure. That was all that same day as the tiny house shoot. We went and changed, went out in the cold desert and filmed some <laughs> other music video stuff while we could. Right. Um, now, is some of that for yeah. If Nothing Happens? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. so that's the other one I have because yeah. that's like, it's probably a top two song of yours of, for me. Is It's just been it. something yeah. I can't get enough of. I think that's so our I, yeah. favorite too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, our it's favorite. It's hard not to be. To me, it's in the, the vein of that take time, which... Mm -hmm. 
is another favorite of mine that I always request, and I, yeah. it's never on the set list. <laughs> I know. Hey, we I don't know if we've Florence. ever played it live. <laughs> we played yeah. it Florence. Uh, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I got to come to Florence for one of those shows anyway. Right. But uh, but I wanted to share, if nothing happens, because, again, amazing song, and I want to give people another flavor for This wasn't go to the desert and shoot five videos of similar variety. You went to five completely different destinations. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, like, you'll yeah. see a completely different flavor here as mm -hmm. they spend this one in Las Vegas. Uh, here is If Nothing Happens by Carver Commodore. It's poppy, it's rocky, it's it's alternative. It's all of the greatest things that I want to listen to in a song. It um, even surprises you at times. So to me, it's just this, like when first time I heard this song, World Stopped. I would love to hear like a 28 live version, minutes version of this song, like just where <laughs> there's a whole jam section in the middle. Like I just yeah. think this oh, is that'd be a cool. great song to just be yeah. in. We've talked about vibing on this one for a little bit. We need some more jam songs. Yeah. Yeah. Even that, that one little it. mini like breakdown right before the very uh -huh. first chorus. Yeah. I could just see that going off into some other place and then coming totally. back again. Like or more in the middle, whatever. Like it's just such an amazing song. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. And then again, like to me, watching the videos, I hadn't watched the movie yet. So then right. watching the movie, you're like, wait, I gotta go back and watch all of them over again. <laughs> yeah. Because it brought such different layer and context to the, yeah. the moment, the headspace you were in in there. And what this song is about, again, is this whole moment of not self-doubt, but like that whole, like, has it been worth it? And ultimately, right. yeah, it has been because it's it's been worth the ride. Yep. Exactly. And, and just kind of the coming to terms with like, listen, being in a band is a gamble that we're willing to take. That was kind of the, the, the reason for the slot machine, the reason for the Las Vegas, you know, background was um, basically to kind of visually symbolize how we felt of, it kind of feels like you're gambling your dreams, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. But it was perfect. So, yeah. That's a very prophetic thing. I just thought it was Ocean's Eleven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's an element too. 12, that, like, it, it's not necessarily center stage, but you all have families behind you. You have yes. partners and loved ones and kids and stuff like that. Yes. They're sacrificing for you to go and pursue mm -hmm. this. Like, it's an totally. element that is worthy of mentioning for sure. But mm -hmm. is a, is a part of. It's a factor of the lifestyle you're choosing. So it's like, right. you know, th there's there's something like that that also is part of this. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> And, um, and kind of like Phil mentioned earlier, um, how when we first hopped in the chat and he was talking about how we were kind of playing less shows, but more quality over quantity and stuff, sure. you know, all of those things factor into like, hey, like, you know, let's let's do tour dates that really matter because, you know, I, I can't miss this thing or, you know, like we can't yeah. miss Noli's birthday. We can't miss Milo's birthday, you know, like, the, you know, there's life happening behind the scenes that it's like, 
we have these amazing support systems that want us to go out there. But then in turn, we have to be the amazing support systems when we get back too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we're in it for the long haul, uh, but we're just trying to be good, uh, good men about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, there's a, wanted to take a moment here to promote what you want to make sure we, we touch on before kind of going into the close here, because you'll understand where I'm going in a second, but, uh, people who are mentioning here to join the discord. So that's definitely something we wanted to mention. There is a Carver Commodore discord. Yes. If you want to touch on that and then anything else that you've got another kind of tour swing through like kind of South central U S if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. You join the discord. You can also join the cult, which is our fan club. And they're talking about bracelets and all kind yeah. of cool stuff that they. A lot do. of people are trying to come in to talk about the bracelets. Yeah, and yes. baskets. 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 Yeah, baskets too. That's new lore right there. New lore. <laughs> Study up. <laughs> um, but there's obviously, like we always mention, this the best way to support a band is to either buy merch directly from them, so the, the yeah. website has that, and or go to a show, buying tickets to a show lets those venues know that this is music that people want to totally. hear and see in live. So like those are the ways to kind of support an artist that. You know, you yeah. want to make sure is, is is feeling that love and receiving that revenue even more importantly. So yeah. um, those are some things we definitely wanted to touch on here. But any other promotions you wanted to make sure we hit on before we, we kind of go down the, the amazing closed wormhole? No, I mean, just check out the tour dates, you know, yep. come out, have fun with us. We want to we love connecting with you know, people, I mean, even people in the chat, like Tara, I think maybe Miller might be in there. Mm-hmm. Even Philip, like you, like we love creating a culture of like friendship, sure. camaraderie. Um, you know, if we meet you, we, you're, you're part of the family immediately. And we want you to feel that way. Um, so yeah, come out to a show and become part of the, the crew and, you know, like, yeah. And like you said, supporting by way of merch, buying vinyl like that's huge you know even the other day i'm not sure the exact number but um you get i think per stream it's like 0.006 cents per stream (laughs) yeah and now you have to break a thousand to even get that right and so uh, (laughs) the math we did the math last night me and clayton i believe it was last night we did the math i'm like you could buy a vinyl for thirty dollars, and that's the equivalent of listening to one song on Spotify five thousand times. Oh, that's awesome! Um, that's a good stat. So, we always wanted to do that. Like either yeah. a T-shirt or a vinyl is worth five thousand yeah. streams. That's so. Huge. So you know, like five thousand streams is awesome, but you know, if you come and buy a vinyl, that's immediate mm-hmm. gas money. That's immediate feeding us. That's immediate sure. putting us yeah, in a, a, where we can stay somewhere safe for the night and not some dingy, <laughs> that allows scary you to make a motel. bed in an Airbnb. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just <laughs> and two, I know that the other guys would want to just say thank you to you philip and yeah for the support you know like mm-hmm. for just always being a, a champion of us um oh, you know and it's, it's nice to have someone like you that we can trust that's out there like you know <laughs> telling people about us and it saying, from the rooftops Absolutely. yeah 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 for sure uh so uh philip anything else you would want to promote or i just want to make sure we touch on anything that needs to be kind of out there in the ether just keep an eye out for new music that's I right when it's coming but it's coming Awesome. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, follow, that's that. another one. Subscribe know on the socials, do the follows on the socials, and, yeah. and that's how they can keep up on that. And of course, totally. if they follow us, uh, we'll be echoing it as well. Um, so, what I wanted to do here was kind of close the show with what you close your show with because it's also connected <laughs> to our music. Um, nice. so what I wanted to bring in here is uh, a quick kind of rundown of our opening show music is very much Carver Commodore music. So, I was going to play it here uh, at a lower volume so we can talk over the top of it. But in our opening here, um, this is uh, the first song uh, that happens here is and the goal is to bring you your next favorite band is that's the music that's on the background as leading that song it then moves to a different band this is music by uh, Argonaut Wasp but when we get to the other side of the interview clips um, if I can pull this over that's phenomenal Welcome really to cool. your yeah. next so this favorite part here band. That's both the show title is and this our promised to you. Nick Jazzy version of Pathetic again. Are tireless in our pursuit of which I found to be, first of all, utterly amazing, given what the real song sounds like, which is about what we're going to touch into here. Delivering for years, but have but flown under the, the, uh, the beauty here is just, I think, again, this is what five songs you do in this kind of acoustic style uh, 
on the one album that has like the it's like the bonus version of it. So you can go and capture five songs that are done in this more acoustic-y kind of redone versions. And that Pathetic Again one is amazing because it's so different from what the original is. Mm -hmm. And it's what you often close your shows with. So I happen to capture it. First of all, thank you for letting me use the music. Absolutely. But it was also yet another one where, if you remember, the first time we had you on was when you did this epic co close at Music Fest mm -hmm. where <laughs> guitars almost got smashed and basically all of Music Fest shut down, even though it was four in the afternoon. Um, but uh, it was just this amazing, uh, well, for me, I went home after that. I was like, what could beat that? I'm leaving. <laughs> um, but then uh, I guess it was September last year. Might have, uh, basically, it was you played at World Cafe Live in Philly. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, actually, Miller, I think you're in this one. I think you, we, we catch you uh, somewhat in, in, the, in the, the moments of this. But I wanted to kind of play this. We can chat about it. And then when we get to the real close, I think we're going to just let that close out the show. Um, okay. So uh, let me bring this up here and, and people can enjoy. This is, again, now, now think about for those of you who have listened to the opening show music and that jazzy stuff, uh, which, again, is the song Pathetic Again that we speak over. Um, this is what the real original version sounds like. Uh, it obviously gets introed first, but uh, but enjoy Pathetic again. And, and I want to bring you guys up to kind of just talk about maybe the various versions of the way this song has closed for you, because it has different like mm -hmm. feelings at different points. So anyway, here's uh, Pathetic again, Carver Commodore. Pathetic again. And we've been Carver Commodore. See you next time. Thanks for coming out. guys chose this as a closer for obvious musical yeah. reasons but was there a first time you picked it and you were like oh yeah let's try that early on yes and actually you know you talk about the closing closing part of this song right right right. we just rip everything apart there's right. nonsense for two minutes that came out of a specific show in alabama uh, oh really was, i think it was auburn we were playing yeah. an outdoor festival there and it just something was brewing up inside of us and it just yeah. kind of came out all of a sudden and there's a video of it on our tiktok <laughs> it's the first time we just kind of let loose on something i think we'd all been listening to too much idols at that point <laughs> and i love the way you guys I are singing my guitar there. into the into the grass area and peyton's over there just banging on the keyboard and, right mm -hmm. and that happens in this one too i thought that was yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly um, and ever since then, we're like, oh, that kind of felt good. Like, right. It's you know, a cathartic, it, like, you it left is. it all out there moment. Yeah. And now we're just taking it to the extreme. Yeah. We played in Florence last weekend, you know, like I said at the beginning. And we went three or four times on the end. <laughs> and yeah. And we just consecutively dropped tuning each tuned time. Down. So it just got more and more, like, deep and gross deep sounding. And low <laughs> and out of time. And turned into something that we're not yeah really Phillip's out there hanging out with <laughs> uh -huh. miller in the front row there right yeah Ripping strings <laughs> off and you know it's sliding around on the ground but it's a blast yeah and always fun it's kind of hard to come back from that song if it's early in the set because yeah oh yeah totally so here's the big fun finish and so before that yeah. comes i'm gonna let that go uh philip and david thank you so much for joining today yeah. thank you all for thank for, you um letting us uh, kind of feature all the music and, and for, uh, you know, sharing all of your talent and can't wait for all the new music to come out. You got it. Yeah. Dude. Thank y'all for everything you do and congrats on a hundred. Yeah. Thank you. That's thank incredible. You. Yeah. All right. So let's we'll see you at 200. Absolutely. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't take that long next time. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Bye. Later. Bye. All right. So let's let, uh, Carver Comerguard bring it home with Pathetic Again Close.
I can't believe it says one more song. <laughs> Who can have one more song after that? All right, Phil, let, let's say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Episode 100 of Your Next Favorite Band. We hope you've truly enjoyed it. We'd like to sincerely thank all of our guests. George Wacker of Lehigh Valley with Love. Uh, Blair Crimmins of Blair Crimmins and the Hookers. And Philip and David from Carver Commodore. That was such an honor to have you all a part of this. All such important and formative moments for us uh, in, in the beginnings of uh, establishing something that has now become our next favorite band and, and 100 episodes later. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. It's been a great audience and we hope that uh, you continue to like and subscribe and follow us so that we can continue to uh, bring your next favorite band each week, each month, and uh, whether it's episodes or live shows or um, the podcast is another place where people can uh, check these all out. Um, thank you again all so much for your support. Um, and as always, our hope is to bring you your next favorite band. If you were tuning in tonight because you knew uh, either Blair or Carver Commodore or even George, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we hope that you liked what you heard and what you saw and that you might do that. You might subscribe so that we can uh, you know, bring you some future content uh, and, and bring you um, great music. Um, that's a, a really uh, it's a, something that really we're passionate about, obviously, and we've got great stuff lined up for uh, the rest of uh, March. April, May is already all booked out, and then we're heading into festival season, which is amazing. So, and then we've got music fest. So, really, genuinely hope to see you at a live show soon.